This is Mercury, the smallest planet in the solar system. It's rocky, and size-wise, it's about in the middle between the Moon and Mars. And 18 Mercuries would fit inside our Earth. It is so small that even two moons are bigger, Jupiter's Ganymede and Saturn's Titan. Despite that, Mercury weighs more than the two of these combined, because it's really dense, though it still only weighs 5% that of Earth. And that's why its gravity is weak. A 100 pound or kilo person would only weigh 38 pounds or kilos there. In Mercury's sky, the Sun is three times bigger and seven times brighter than in ours. That's because Mercury is the planet closest to the Sun. Sometimes it passes exactly between the Sun and Earth. It looks like this and it's called a transit of Mercury. It lasts about five hours and the next one will occur on Saturday, November 13th, 2032. Regardless of transits, in our sky, Mercury is always somewhere close to the Sun. So, it's usually super hard to see. Except dawn and dusk, when it can be bright and visible by naked eye. Thanks to that, astronomers have been observing it for a very long time. At least since the 14th century before Common Era. Back then, they didn't know almost anything about it. For instance, they had no clue it changes phases, just like our moon, which can be seen through a telescope. Nevertheless, one thing was clear. It moves really fast. And that is why it got named Mercury, after the Roman god of travelers and the messenger of gods. Why is the planet so fast though? Because it's the closest to the Sun, and so the Sun attracts it the most strongly. The time Mercury takes to revolve around it, or its year, is only 88 Earth days long. For a long time it was thought that its day also lasts 88 of our days. If that were the case, the Sun and Mercury would move like Earth and the Moon, in that if we watched Mercury from the Sun, we'd always see the same side of it. It'd be a case of tidal locking, which is common in the universe. However, in 1965, it was surprisingly proved that Mercury moves differently. It is tidally locked, but not in the usual way. For each rotation around its axis, it completes not its full path around the Sun, but two-thirds of it. Thus, during two years, only three days pass on Mercury. One Mercurian day therefore lasts 59 Earth days, or 1408 hours, just like every Monday on Earth. The fact that Mercury moves like this makes strange things happen, like this one. There's a couple of special spots on the planet. Let's go to one and let's observe the Sun. Sooner or later, we'll see this. The Sun is setting, but then it changes direction and starts going back. After that, it changes its mind again and is now going down. Then it switches gears yet again. And once more, and only now, it finally sets. This entire show lasts 16 Earth days. One of the reasons why it happens is that Mercury's orbit around the Sun is weird. The most elliptical out of all eight planets. On the other hand, its axial tilt is the smallest of all the planets. Its rotational axis is basically perpendicular to its orbit around the Sun. The movement of Mercury was, by the way, for a long time, kind of a mystery. There was a small deviation 
between how it was supposed to move on paper and its actual observed movements in the sky. There were various theories as to why, like the alleged existence of the planet Vulcan, even closer to the Sun. It was eventually solved by Albert Einstein. If we use his theory of general relativity in the calculations, in other words, if we take into account how the Sun bends spacetime, the results are identical to Mercury's actual movements, without any deviation. So, the way Mercury moves today is fully understood, but we don't really know how it will move in the distant future. That's because its oval orbit can get even way more oval. Simulations show that while this is not a probable possibility, it is a real one. If it happens, Mercury will be in danger of smashing into either the Sun or Venus, or of being ejected from the solar system altogether. But even if it doesn't happen, Mercury will not be here forever. Our Sun will expand dramatically. In 5.5 billion years, it will become a red giant. And if Mercury is still here, it will end up inside our star. But what is inside Mercury? Just like with Earth, there's an iron core, a rocky mantle, and a thin rocky crust. The core of any planet should be small. In the case of Earth, it makes up 17% of its volume. Mercury is different. It has a massive core, making up 55% of its volume. Due to this unusual structure, the whole planet is slowly but surely getting smaller. In the past few billion years, its diameter has shrunk by several kilometers. Mercury is therefore tectonically active, meaning its surface gradually changes. Apart from Earth, it's the only such planet in the solar system. And it likely has earthquakes. Or, well, Mercury quakes. Another consequence of the big core is that Mercury has a magnetic field. It's 100 times weaker than Earth's, but at least it has one, unlike our Moon, Venus or Mars. What Mercury doesn't have are moons. It has zero. Another thing it doesn't have is a proper atmosphere. It's practically a vacuum there. However, there are some particles moving above its surface, mainly hydrogen, helium, oxygen, sodium, calcium, potassium, and water vapor. They used to be a part of the planet's surface, until impacts of asteroids, comets, and so on got them up there. This thin layer of atoms and molecules is called the exosphere. The Earth, by the way, also has an exosphere. It's the atmosphere's highest, least dense layer. The particles that flow out of Mercury's surface not only form its exosphere, but also its tail. Yes, Mercury is the only planet in the solar system to have a tail, similar to a tail of a comet. And it's long, millions of kilometers long. The various impacts have left a huge number of craters on Mercury. It's covered with them. And they are named after artists. So we can find craters like Beethoven, Vivaldi and Botticelli, but also Tolkien, Disney and Lennon. This is Caloris. While not named after an artist, it is the planet's largest crater, with a diameter of over 1500 kilometers. Its width is thus about the same as the distance between Stockholm and Paris, or LA and Seattle. And the explosion that created it was so extreme that it also created mountains on the opposite side of the planet. 
and it triggered volcanic activity. But that was long ago. Today, Mercury is not volcanically active anymore. Air. Better said, our atmosphere. It traps and stores some heat. And that is why the temperature differences between day and night are pretty small on Earth. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, and so the differences are drastic there. At night, it's around minus 180 degrees Celsius. But Mercury is really close to the Sun, so during the day, temperatures reach plus 430 Celsius. And yet, it is not the warmest planet. Although Mercury is closest to the Sun, Venus is still a lot warmer due to its very dense, toxic atmosphere. The entire surface of Venus is hot. On Mercury, however, there are places where it's always very cold. And that's inside deep craters located close to the poles of the planet. Sun's rays haven't gotten there for billions of years. And thanks to that, many of them are home to ice. That's right, water ice. It probably comes from comets and asteroids. It sounds absurd, but it's true. There are hundreds of billions of tons of frozen water on Mercury, even though it is the planet closest to the Sun and it's 430 degrees Celsius there during the day, enough to melt lead. Nature just has a better imagination than we do. Mercury is not that far. It's seven times closer than Jupiter and 14 times closer than Saturn. But despite that, getting into its orbit is more difficult and more expensive. It requires a lot of braking because of the Sun's huge gravity. Therefore, it has so far only been studied by two space probes. Both were American and most of the information we have about Mercury comes from their data. The first one was from 1974 to 75, Mariner 10. It wasn't in planet's orbit, just did free flybys. And it saw the same side of Mercury during each, so we only had 40% of its surface mapped. That didn't change until 2011, when the Messenger spacecraft got into Mercury's orbit. This is one of the many photos it took from there. And it's us, Earth and the Moon. It was sending us a lot of useful data from the orbit until 2015. And thanks to it, 100% of the surface is now mapped. Today, a third spacecraft is on its way to Mercury. It's Bepi Colombo, a joint project of the European and Japanese space agencies. Small, dense, fast, hot, yet freezing. Extraordinary for many reasons. Its movement, giant core, magnetic field, tail, or the many gigatons of ice it hides. That is Mercury. And this is where our video ends. But our journey through space has just begun.